Okay, so here's an explanation of uh, one measure of modularity introduced by Newman a while back. Okay, so let's imagine we have a, a network and we've decided that there are three communities here, or we've made a guess that there are. So some nodes have been grouped into um, communities one, two, and three. There are some edges between um, each of these groups and then many edges in uh, within. And so that's what we're aiming for, right? We want more if it's a real community, we should be able to see more edges within, right? So there are more ways to do this later on, but this is a this is a good start. Okay, so all right, let's go through. We count up all the edges. We have so many edges, and we then create this um, uh, matrix based on the community structure we've um, guessed at or arrived at through some algorithm. Uh, and so each entry is the fraction of edges between community uh, I and J. And it's symmetric, so these things are the same, right? So we're just going back and forth. And that, so that, that can lead to some problems, but that's just the way this is. So it's a symmetric matrix. So E11 is the number of, um, the fraction of edges, right? So look at all edges and take the fraction uh, between nodes in uh, community one. All right, so if we sum, okay, here we're summing across. It doesn't matter, but if we're summing across, uh, so J equals one, so we're summing across here. Then we'll, we'll call this thing AI. So this is the fraction of edges that have at least one end in community I. Right, so that's a that's that's a a good thing to know. So once we start to then think about a random version of this, right? We always want to compare to a random version, um, and many of the things we do. Then uh, we'll need to kind of understand sort of the degree of these things. All right. So that little guy there. Uh, so the randomized version. Then we'll build it. We can, or we can at least write down uh, how the the edges would be distributed. So EIJ random is now going to be AI times AJ, right? So this is the fraction of edges um, coming out of community I, community J. We just multiply those two guys together. So these are so now it's independent, right? It's been separated. Um, we can just check that this is okay. So if we sum over J again for this random version. The AI is independent of J, so that pops out. Some of this guy, we get one, right? And so we've got AI again. So it looks the same in terms of the fraction of edges uh, that are within, or that have at least one end in a community. Looks the same. Uh, it's independent, so it's a randomized version. All right, so that's that's useful. So one one thing we can then say is, well, what's what's the fraction of edges that are totally completely within communities? Um, and that by itself is not enough, right? So we could just have one big network or we could just put a big circle around the whole network and then all of the edges are within that community. So that would get a that would get a one, right? If we just measure that. So we want to subtract off what we'd see if um, what we'd find if we uh, randomized the, the system, right? So we're gonna keep these same groupings. The, the same the same number of edges are gonna be related to one and two and three. We're just gonna randomly rewire them. Um, so if we've done a really bad job, it's going to be very dense here, very dense here, very dense here, and very few edges in between. All right. Okay, so what we're getting to is this. Uh, the fraction of um, edges within communities is going to be actually the trace of each. So it's a sum of EII, right? All right, so we're going to sum down here. So that's the fraction of all edges that are within communities. And then we have to subtract off the randomized version. And AIJ random is AIAJ, so we want AI squared, in fact, right? Uh, so this is the sum here. So this is what EII looks like, right? So this is EII random. Uh, so we subtract that off, and so we get, so if this is, you know, and then we can play around with this, right? So if it's zero, of course, then uh, we haven't done a very good job because we're at the same level as a purely random um, version. Uh, but we want to see this thing to be positive, right? So we'll have that later on. So this is simply the trace of E. This guy, uh, we've seen this before. Uh, so it's sum of I. So each one, we can write it like this. Let's well, write J, um, uh, E, right? I, J. That's the first guy. And let's make it a K, E, I, K here. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to put the put this guy, this sum in. Pull these guys out, swap one of these guys around. So let's, because of symmetry, we'll write this as EJI. Okay, so we've got a sum for J, sum for K here, 
and the sum of i is here, and then there's an ej_i and eik, just delicious. So these guys match up, and this is this piece here is the ijth uh, entry in e squared. All right, this is the definition of matrix multiplication, row, column, uh, and then oh sorry, that's the jkth entry. Right, J K J K th entry. So, uh, and then it's the sum over J and K. So that means it's actually the sum of uh, all of the entries. So it's the what we might call the one norm of E squared. Right. So you compute E squared and then just sum up all the entries. Okay. So that's a nice way of representing that, and that is, you know, arguably the simple, you know, one of the simplest measures of modularity.